All right, all right. What's going on, y'all? Lockout Men back again with another podcast interview for you. Hey, yes, sir. That is uh, my cousin, DJ Brian Wolf, playing us in. Who is that DJ like that? If y'all want to know about this man right here, y'all check him out on Instagram at DJ Ryan Wolf. And uh, holler at my guy, man. Holler at my cousin. That's what's up. Well, welcome, y'all, to another episode of the Lockout Men podcast show. I am your host, Lockout Men, here. And yes, I have another podcast interview for you guys this evening. This young man hooked up with me uh, via Facebook, and he was like, "Yo, I got, yeah, I want to come in and chop it up with you. You know, give my, give my uh, point on coming into the game and, and stuff like that, stuff like that. We 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 gonna chop it up with him. We we gonna chop it up with him. So before we uh, before I do that, I gotta set the buttons right because I gotta turn around and set the buttons and everything. So what I wanna do is welcome. Wayne Shipman to the show. All right, all right, Broham, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, I'm sitting in my truck just trying to kill the evening. He says he's done for the day. He says he's trying to kill the evening. So where where uh where are you at right now? Where 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 you posted up at? Oh uh I'm on 70, heading eastbound. I'm in between St. Louis and Indianapolis. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you you in my neck of the woods, bro. You, you in my neck of the woods, but right, really? but right now I'm up in yeah. uh, right now I'm up in Michigan, uh, right here at this Amazon fulfillment. <laughs> and uh, and wow, this this COVID nineteen thing got got shippers and receivers in the tizzy, man. I gotta. I, I'm, I'm. Oh yeah. I'm up here. We we can't get out of our trucks. We gotta. I, I feel sorry for truckers that don't have phones. If you guys don't have phones in the new millennial, I don't know where you guys is at. Because if you don't have a phone, you fucked. <laughs> you gotta. Yeah, some of the old timers that don't want the iPhone thing, they just want their flip phone. Thing. Right. I, I, and as a matter of fact, I seen an old timer. Uh, day before yesterday at a truck stop, he was on the he was on the flip phone, and I I happened to, I asked him I was like, bro, I says, uh, is that a flip phone? He was like, yeah, yeah, this is a flip phone. I was like, uh, uh, uh why why you don't have the, the, the you got an Android, you got a tablet? He was like, nope. He said I don't have no tablet, nope, I don't have nope. no Android, I don't have none of that. So I was like, well, when brokers be asking to track you, how do they how do they track you? And he goes, well, I'm a company driver. So I was like, oh, OK, well, what if you was just what if you was an owner operator? Then do you think you would you would upgrade? I say, have you ever had a, um, a, a regular like, you know, like regular phone? He was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I, I stuck with the uh Old, no. old reliable and you know what i i kind of think i was like i kind of agree with him because these phones man these phones is ridiculously expensive the new the new android oh, yeah. the new samsung 20 i got the i got the i got the s what's this the s10 and i paid like 800 or 900 dollars for this phone but the new phone, oh yeah, the the new phone, the S twenty, and dude told me, yeah. to, dude told me the 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 top of the line one, the the S twenty Max or whatever that shit is, $1,700, <laughs> 1700 dollars, bro. Oh, for a phone, come on. Well, it's a computer, but seventeen hundred dollars. Well. Yeah. Seven. Well, I've got the iPhone 8, and it cost me. I got the iPhone, actually, it's the 7 Plus. Mm -hmm. Two-year contract with Verizon, and I think in the end game, I'm paying like almost $900 for it. 
but the technology that's on the phone, I have to have it out here in the industry. I'm sorry, but yeah. we have to have it. Because it's a lot of... I'm not dogging the old timers. My father and my mother and a couple people I know, they're just intimidated by the technology. But the industry demands that we kind of step up the game, man. If you're going to be out here and be a part of the industry, it's, you got to you gotta wear it. Do it. You you gotta you gotta follow you gotta follow the times, man. You gotta follow the times. But I'm yeah. still I am still sick of the price of that phone, man. Seventeen hundred dollars. Oh, I know, man. And dude yeah. was like, and he tried to sell me into the phone too. He was like, well, you know, you get a, you know, you get a five hundred dollar trade in credit if ain't nothing wrong with your phone. I was like, exactly. Yeah. I, I said I did like this. I was like, <laughs> exactly. Ain't nothing wrong with this phone, bruh. With I just got phone. I just got this motherfucker last year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean when, well, when you think about it this way, the new Xbox and the new PlayStation 5 is coming out this year. And the hmm. old the old Xbox uh the old Xbox and the old PlayStation been out for 7 years before they came out with new uh, technology this phone yeah the i i mean the i the 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 samsung wait the samsung galaxy 10 plus came out last year <laughs> and it's obsolete <sighs> hey it's pre-planned obsolete and these technology devices, from what I understand, you probably agree with me. We are consumers. Mm -hmm. We're in demand. We demand. We're in. It's a consumer demand thing. Mm -hmm. It ain't because the technology goes bad or the phone goes bad. They program the software so that it doesn't work for you anymore, and mm -hmm. you think there's a glitch, and you got to go get a new phone. Exactly. I, iPhone is notorious for that shit iPhone is notorious. Laptop I computers. <laughs> <laughs> Now, wow. These laptop computers are the same way. If you don't get the upgrades and all that, then it doesn't function properly. Exactly, exactly. But at least, at least with $1,200, with a, we can fix that for you. Yeah, but at least with a laptop, you, you can go about a good couple of years on a laptop. But oh, a, yeah. But on a phone, yeah. though, they, 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 push, they, they push these <laughs> new phones on us. Every year, man, and it's uh -huh. it, it's 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 mind blowing. It's it's like, okay, I appreciate I appreciate the technology, but <laughs> they, you know how you know how they do this shit. They they do this like the phone, like the iPhone, t the uh, not the iPhone, but the Samsung Galaxy Ten Plus, right? Came out last year, right? Uh, about February of last year, right? The iPhone. I mean the the why I keep saying iPhone, the Samsung Galaxy Twenty was already made when this phone came oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I I mean the the same thing with the iPhone. That that new iPhone was already made in production, ready to go when. They came out with with the Galaxy S10 saying that this is the this is the best thing since sliced bread. Top of the line, yeah. And they was lying all that damn time because they had the they had the S20 ready to go. So that was the next best thing since sliced bread, man. <laughs> we you you right man we we, we we have to we have to follow we have we have to follow the times, man. We got to we got to keep up with the times and being in this industry, like you said, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, like you said, being in this industry, man, we have to, we have to have this technology in order to, in order to yeah. go through our day now. You know, you got, you got brokers, yeah. you got brokers asking us to download tracking. Um, yeah. Tracking apps you and got, you use it. Yeah, and then you when got, you're done with that load, mm -hmm. you don't need that app anymore. But if you get with that broker again, you got to get it again. Crap. And they can't use the universal tracking app. I went through that with this company that I have a complaint with. 
you know, almost every broker that I went to had a different app. Micro I had to download a different app on my phone. The company had to have an app on their software. Mm-hmm. And two days later, I wasn't using it, so I deleted it from my phone. Crazy, right? But right. it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like the universal all right, man. All right, Wayne, man. Well, let's talk a let's talk a little bit about you, uh, about yourself, and in, in this game, man. You said right here you uh, you uh, you fifty two. So you you just recently came into the game at the age of fifty two, or you or you been out here? Oh, I've been out here three years. Mm-hmm. I was a maintenance technician for apartments for about ten years, bouncing around. You know, no matter how much endorsements and how many certifications how many tools i was only worth about 16 bucks an hour or 18 maybe at the top mm. and my wife actually got us in the industry she came home fed up one day she was working as a you know at kroger to be honest she was and it's a union kind of environment and she came home frustrated and said you know what you can be a maintenance technology you can be a maintenance technician if you want i'm going to be a truck driver and i'm like what Oh. oh, yeah. She set the bar in the family. She went through uh, Napier training, Napier truck driver training school in Cincinnati. She went through there, blew the doors off. She graduated, no problem. So I came in the class behind her, and everybody was like, oh, you're Bernie's husband. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, she was one and done, friend. She got through here one time. Are you going to do that? And I'm like, I guess I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so yo, I have to. so yo, like the so, woman went through one and done. So your wife was, so your wife was your big, uh, your your big influencer to get into the into the game. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. All right. We could talk about it a little bit, but it's hard to imagine getting up in a big truck and take off. And it's like I'm a maintenance guy. I got a Ford F one fifty. I don't have a semi truck, you know. So both of you are are you our team drivers? Are, are you our team drivers or are you or or you solo drivers with no. with with, uh, with different companies? Solo with different companies. Oh, okay. She's actually with Creek Carrier. Mm-hmm. And I'm with Baylor Trucking out of Sunman, Indiana. Oh, okay, Baylor. But she got hired first, so I rode with her for several weeks as a passenger, just to kind of chill and see the country for a while. And get and, a feel, uh, and I get tried a feel sleeping the in the back of the truck while she was driving. Couldn't do and it. And it wasn't the fear of the crash, man. It wasn't we. It wasn't because I was afraid of her driving. It's just a bumpy road out there, you know? Mm-hmm. If you try to sleep in the bunk while someone's driving a semi-truck, you are not getting much sleep. I'm sorry. I don't know how them guys do it, but I can't. So You're not You're not getting good sleep. I can't. You, you're not getting good sleep, so nope. to say. I got to get my eight hours parked uninterrupted. I'm grouchy if I don't. <laughs> so you said, uh, so for 10 years, you, you was uh, a maintenance. What What is a maintenance technician exactly? What? Well, for apartments and residential homes, I'm the guy when, you're, when your dishwasher quits working or your toilet gets plugged up, oh, okay. they send me. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you, you rocked out with that. For so I got to be polite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to be nice if I don't feel like being nice and I got to, I got to listen to the residents and do customer service and all that stuff and please everybody mm-hmm. and get a little paycheck in return. That's what it was. Everybody. And it's unfortunate. So I came out here and we're, you know, there's money out here. Mm-hmm. There's money out here in the industry uh, that you're going to work for. You're, I haven't heard anybody yet that came out here and they've got the cush position where they just kind of work when they feel like it and take days off and still make good money. You know, if you're going to make money in this industry, you're going to hustle. Exactly. Exactly. So, so at least being, being the new guy. Yeah. Now I, I came into the game at 45, you know, I, I thought, you know, I, I thought 45 was old, but you came in the game. You you came in the game at what 40, 49. 49 at that forty eight forty nine yeah forty nine. Uh, how how was it? Uh-huh. How, how 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 you felt as an old time? Well, as an older as an older gentleman, get into getting into an industry like this late. To be honest, I wish I would have done it years ago. Mm-hmm. because it's not as intimidating and as, you know, 
that or whatever. I just I was always intimidated by it. Like, well, I could never drive one of them trucks and mm-hmm. stuff. And, but really, I wished I would have kind of had the attitude to try it years ago. But coming into the industry, I don't think age is a factor, to be honest. It's a mindset. Mm-hmm. I came in here completely open-minded. I was teachable. Um, and I was looking forward to a change. I was so burned out on what I was doing, man. I think I could have, you know, took off selling flowers for all I cared as long as I'd get out of the maintenance technician thing. But this industry is exciting to me because the windshield's always moving scenery, you know? Mm-hmm. I got to be moving. If I'm not moving, I'm bored and restless. You I you sound like you you sound like me for a little bit because if I'm not if I'm not moving yeah. if I'm not moving or anything like that I get restless and yeah I get bored easy I don't uh, I don't understand is yeah. is that is that a is is that a niche for us old guys man I mean if we're not if if we're not moving or we or or we just restless we we just get bored like wow <laughs> I don't know man but uh. I'll be honest with you, I'm trying my best to be a performer in the industry. I mean, because me and my wife both agree, I cannot imagine going back to that slow-ass pace of what I was doing before. Mm-hmm. And uh, she she cannot imagine going back to not just a grocery store. I mean, she worked in the, in the bakery. She loves being in the bakery. She loves baking things mm-hmm. and all that, but... At the end of the day, there's so much negative politics just in order to, to get along in the, in the, if you, if you can read in between the lines there, I'm not a spokesperson about it, but as a maintenance technician, I had to satisfy the customer. I had to satisfy the manager. I had to satisfy my supervisor. Mm-hmm. I had to satisfy literally anybody walking by because if they weren't happy, they were on the attack and, and, you know, they would call up the office. Your maintenance man was so rude to me. And it's like, really, I wasn't rude to her. I just didn't take the time to stand there and talk, you know? Mm-hmm. And at least out here in the industry, you know, you have those things. There's pockets out here where you just can't make them happy. And especially you were talking about the COVID-19 thing. Dude, just in the three years I've been here, the industry has completely changed just because of that. Uh, we were treated, you know... Some customers treat us just as a transaction, you know, mm-hmm. park over there, wait your turn, come to the guard shack, get your paperwork. Now it's like you said, don't get out of the truck. Mm-hmm. Don't respond until we ask you to mm-hmm. stand on the little red X. Mm-hmm. No more than two people in line mm-hmm. at the same time. No, you can't use I've been restroom. to customers where you can't use the restroom. You leave your doors open. You put the bills in the back of the trailer. You back up on the dock. They call your phone, you pull forward, get the signed paperwork, and leave. No human contact. None you know? at all. In so it's changed. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an attitude, though. It's like, I'm not, I don't think it's an age factor. You know, the, young, the younger guys, the younger ladies and gentlemen that are coming out here, they have just as much expectation and, you know, hope as we do. And that's kind of what I contacted you about was, I'm not just I'm not just trying to voice a grievance against one company because they did me wrong or some crap. I came out here with kind of an educated outlook because I went through a truck driver training company. Mm-hmm. You know, they trained us what to do in the industry and what to expect. And we were told, you know, in the classroom on a daily basis, recruiters will tell you whatever you want to hear. Exactly. They will tickle you with what sounds great and get you in the company, but they're just trying to fill seats and do great. Mm-hmm. You know, don't take it personal. It's just business. It's just business. Mm-hmm. Well, this particular company, I had already been out here two and a half years. Mm-hmm. First company I was with, I was with for 25 months and it was all dedicated lanes and it was based on driver seniority. Mm-hmm. And I got bumped three times in one year off of runs that was good money and got me home for my home time. And I got bumped three times 
in a year, and every time I'd get bumped by a senior driver, I was on open board again, like trying to find a bid to run on a job. So I, you know, I got tired of getting bumped, and I moved on. But I called this company in particular, talked to the uh, recruiter, Mm -hmm. and she kept in touch with me because I wasn't committed. I wasn't committed to joining the company yet, but I made contact. And it was a refrigerated unit company exclusively, reefer units. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, uh, when I go to sleep at night, when the reefer units park next to me, I don't like it. You know, they're loud. And she was like, well, I understand. And so I really tried to find an alternative. Like I tried not to go into the reefer unit business. Well, eventually I, I got hired by the company. Now this is the company, the this, orientation. This, is the, this is the company that, uh, that, that the young lady kept, you know, that was chasing you down for, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, she just was giving me courtesy calls like, hey, I'm just checking in with you. We talked a couple weeks ago. Has things changed? And I'm like, no, things haven't changed. They're still kind of getting worse. That dialogue went on for like four months. So she, Four months. Because it was before the holidays, Christmas holidays and all that stuff. And I was like, I'm not changing jobs, you know, mm-hmm. in the middle of the holidays. So by the time I got serious, I looked on their website, I looked up their company, I I did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me, you know, she wasn't over the top, like trying to sell it over the top, Mm -hmm. but there was a lot of things she didn't tell me. Number one was they don't pay layovers. And if you know about the refrigerated, you know, the reefer unit industry, there's a lot of time that you spend just waiting. Yep. A lot of times you got to be at the customer by 3 p.m. or whatever, but they don't start loading you until 8 Mm p.m. And you don't get any of that, you know, they don't pay any kind of detention pay and they don't pay layover pay. And I drove in one week between like four different load assignments. I drove something like 350 empty miles in that week and didn't get paid for one mile empty miles. Wow. So, they don't pay empty money. You know, you know companies. You know, and, you know companies like, like that. They, you, driving in a reefer, uh, in a reefer fleet, reefer. <laughs> you know when we come back. Yeah, you know, a reefer <laughs> fleet. I used to drive in a reefer fleet a bunch of years ago, man. But, <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to get out of that. I had to get out of that industry. It was. It was costing me more than Smoke I was making. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. but in a in a fleet like that, yeah. you 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 get you come. Here's the here's the thing, and this is what I this is what I attest to. You get there on time. You uh, you get there. Yeah. You you get there on time. You get loaded late. Which means you get, an hour early. If, you, if you're on time, you're an hour early. Right. You you get there on time. Yeah. You still get loaded late. You get there late. You yeah, still yeah. get loaded late. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So they reject you, make you wait until the next day. Or they'll make you wait. They, they'll make you wait even longer. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll consider you as a yeah. as a work in. So man, that, that, yeah, a work in. Yeah, they'll consider you as a uh, as a work in and and it's still uh it's still painful when when they when they treat you like that man all right so go go on so the company well, the, so with this so with the company you know she she was pretty much giving you all the sugar and spice and everything nice and then everything yeah, else you figured yeah. out it wasn't it wasn't too for, way, it, yeah. it wasn't to fruition after you got with the company right and it kind of happened in a sort of a weird circumstance because of the COVID-19 thing, right? Mm-hmm. Before I got hired, they had a three-day, eight hours a day for orientation. You stayed at a hotel, three days, three nights. On the fourth day, which would be Thursday, you would get a truck assigned to you. And either that Thursday or Friday, you would get your first load and take off. That was what we were talking about during the preliminary conversation. By the time I went in to get hired, it was right after the COVID-19 breakout. And for probably, I don't know, four or five weeks, they didn't hire anybody. 
they put a freeze on it because they weren't doing orientations like they were, you know, people in a classroom, six, eight, 10, 15 new hired drivers in a classroom, everybody huddling in a group out in the parking lot, that sort of thing. There was no human contact, you know, so they didn't know what to do. There was a freeze on hiring. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of maintained where I was. I was kind of an in-between job at the time, waiting to get hired in. So by the time I got hired in, you know, I had a one day, it was six hours of orientation. We came in, there were three of us that came in six hours in one day on a Monday of orientation and they crammed, they just talked generalized stuff and they gave us like a whole handful of photocopied documents and pages of stuff and references to the website and different things for us to go research on our own because they weren't going to spend more than two days in the hiring process because of COVID-19. Okay. Right. It's been the excuse for a lot of things in the industry now. Yeah. yeah. So we just sat there and did our best. We took notes. We listened. The second day, they literally issued us a truck the second day. My truck came to me. I started the truck and tried to drive to my hotel room that evening, Bobtail. It was like a mile and a half away, and it wouldn't hold air pressure. Mm -hmm. The system would not build air pressure faster than I was using my service brake to stop at a stop sign. And I'm like, what's going on here? Sitting at the stop sign, my low air light came on, the warning going on. So I let the air build up. I got across the road, parked at the hotel, opened the hood, and you could just hear this air escape from under the hood and I was pretty upset because this truck was supposedly thoroughly you know pre-trip and everything by the shop before issuing it to a new hired driver and I'm not a mechanic but when you open the hood and you can just hear the air that's pier piercing your ears it's blowing out of a hose under there mm -hmm. I knew something was wrong with this truck so my first downtime, my first 24-hour downtime was this truck they issued me that actually needed service. So anyway, uh, I get in the truck to take off on my load, and they never actually did a thorough inspection of the tractor with the driver like it's customary. You know, when you join a company, you're signing a contract for that truck. You're signing your life away that you're going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And you're responsible for this equipment. They didn't do the. They told me the truck number and said it's somewhere out there in the parking lot. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm not kidding. So I went out and found it, took it to the hotel, brought it back the next day. They kept it. It took 24 hours. They had to replace the whole clutch assembly for the fan is what it was. Something was locked up and air was blowing out. So I got out on the road. It's a 10-day out kind of program, 10 to 14 days out. And the terminal's located in Loudoun, Tennessee. And they got another one up in Illinois. I forgot the name of the town. But uh, so when you leave the terminal, you're basically out in the industry in this truck on your own. And if you break down, of course, it's roadside assistance and going to the truck stop service centers and that sort of thing. And then they get you home and you take the truck home or to your hometown mm -hmm. every couple of weeks is what the deal was. All right. So I agreed to all this. I get out there, it's reefer units, and almost every load that I received, I had to go get a trailer wash. So you wait in line at Blue Beacon, you go to get the trailer wash, they wash it out, you they would not pay with it with an easy EFS card. I had to pay out of my own pocket then, for every trailer wash. And then you get I reimbursed for it. That's up to like 50, 60 bucks a pop. So I did that. Every time I went across the scale, I had to pay the scale fee and then get reimbursed on payday. They never told me that. And almost every load that I was given required a lumper to unload the trailer and you know about lumpers mm -hmm. it's just the industry standard now a couple hundred bucks for an hour's worth of work so wait a minute 15 pallets with a pallet jacket wayne 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 hold up you mean to tell me that all of this came out of your pocket okay not the lumper fees 
Okay, but the I, we got EFS checks issued for the lumper fees. Okay. But what I'm getting at is on my payday, on my payday, I was hired as an employee driver, not a contractor, not an owner operator. Right. My first paycheck showed every trip expense minus fuel. Every trip expense was listed as a payroll deduction on my paycheck. And then after all the calculations were made for payroll deductions, lumper fees, scales, trailer washes, all that, then they did a reimbursement down at the bottom and reimbursed all that. So it was like the first paycheck was something like $1,000 worth of deductions from payroll and then $1,000 reimbursement. And then each load that I ran and the miles I got paid and all and that then stuff they took calculated out, they, at the bottom. They took out the taxes. The mile. They, they took out taxes on everything. Yeah. Now, you know what? Let's, let's hold well, up. Let's, let's hold sure. up right there because that's, you know, I, I hated when I worked it for, uh, when I worked it for, what was that? J&R Swoogle. Um, I hated when, because you had to pay for, you, you had to pay for the, uh, for the scales, you had to pay for the tolls. Yep. Uh, you had to pay for the tolls yep. out of pocket. You had to pay for the scales out of pocket, and you also had to yep. you also had to pay it. I think it was a I think it was a what's your name card that you had to call in and get a. It wasn't an EFS check, but it was something else. But it came out of my it came out of my check, yeah. but it got reimbursed back into my check. So when I gave yeah. when I gave all the yeah. expenses. When I gave all the expenses, the only thing that that sort of teed me off was the fact that they took taxes out on that stuff. And I'm like, wait, if I'm paying twenty four or twenty five dollars for something that's that I'm getting for the truck or something like that, I want to be reimbursed my I'm whole twenty five dollars, not not twenty two fifty, yeah. not not twenty four ten. Right. The whole twenty five dollars, and that's and well, my 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 problem with that is, and I just want the listeners to see this from the driver's point of view. Okay, owner operators and contract drivers, they're laughing about my conversation right now. They're like, "Dude, didn't you know that?" Well, as an employee driver, okay, at the end of the year. I have to bring my stuff into an attorney and the attorney's going to look at that. And the first thing they're going to say is, man, this is over my head. You know, it cost me like $200 the first couple of years to get my taxes done. Cause it was straight up. My W2 showed everything I earned, mm -hmm. my taxes that I had paid out. Mm -hmm. And he was able to calculate the difference. I owed a thousand dollars because I claimed a little too much during the year. Mm -hmm. This right here, no tax attorney can look at that and know really what happened without spending several hours calculating through all the mess, looking at all your receipts. Did they do it right? Did they charge you extra taxes? Did you know what's all these deductions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I called in and I asked, this was the operations manager of the terminal. And I said, you know, I got my first pay stub. I said, this is upsetting. I said, I have, I said, I'm, a new hire in your company, and I said, you gave me a stack of business cards so that if I run into people at truck stops, I can, you know, tell them, hey, you might want to drive for this company. Mm -hmm. I said, the number one thing that drivers want to ask, what do they pay? Is it fair? You know, not how much cents per mile, but do they pay, do they pay fair? That's pretty much what we're asking. Right. When I ask somebody, well, how much do they pay? I want to know, is it fair for the work we do? I honestly can't tell somebody, oh, man, this company treats you right. You know, I made $1,200. Well, that's not true. I made $1,200 for like 14 days worth of work. Mm -hmm. And out of that 14 days of work that I put in before I got my home time, there was like accumulated like four and a half days, 24-hour period that I sat without pay in parking lots because waiting for appointments. 350 miles I drove empty with no pay. Mm -hmm. Several dropping hooks that I did for other drivers because they ran out of time. I rescued loads. I have no idea if I did get paid fair. I have no idea what I actually got paid. 
But my complaint was at the end of the year, I'm going to have to go in and pay a tax attorney, which now is due. The taxes are due. So I'm going to have to go in and pay, I don't know how much money extra for an attorney to figure out, first of all, if I was actually paid correctly, did they tax me correctly? But my beef with it was nobody told me that. (laughs) I was out there driving, trying to be committed to the company, doing what I thought I was supposed to do. And I mean, I'm one of them guys that, you know, I try to do my free trips right. I I don't just drive the truck for five days and then check the oil. I mean, I try to check the fluids and I kick my tires and I do things. I I really take pride in my my equipment. If the truck breaks down, I'm not making money. You're trying to be, you're trying to be that, you're trying to be that, that, that good driver, (laughs) you know, you're trying to be that dependable driver. I want to be that, that, you're trying to be that driver and unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's I'm trying to be dedicated, and I promised them that I was going to be, you know, I've got their company name and logos on this truck, and, and people driving down the road got dash cams and everything else, so I'm always trying to stay in my lane and do things right. But I worked for them based on this naive assumption that I was going to be treated fair just because they said they are. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, I've been out here three years, not 25 years, but whoever joins this kind of a company would get treated the same. You know what? The kicker was, I'll get to the end of it here. Mm -hmm. The attitude of the company was really represented. When I called them up and said, look, you guys, I was up near Chicago and I sat there for something like 26 hours waiting for them to find me a load. Near Chicago? Are you kidding me? You can't find a load out of Chicago <laughs> to get me somewhere, anywhere, except sitting in this parking lot. So I called up and said, look, I have to quit. I have to quit. There was a terminal in Princeton, Illinois, and a terminal in Loudoun, Tennessee. I said, your new drivers are hired out of Loudoun, Tennessee. I said, I'm willing to drive this truck all the way to Loudoun, Tennessee at 600 miles. Mm-hmm. I said, but I have to quit. So this operation manager called me back and he says, well, you got two choices. You can drop it off at Princeton and find your own way home or you can drive it to Loudoun, Tennessee and we'll pay for a rental car. And I said, well, I'm bringing it to Loudoun, Tennessee because I promised I would. So anyway, long story short, I drove 600 miles, no pay, got their equipment back to them because I know they can put a mark on my record and call it something like an unauthorized move or left equipment in an unauthorized location. That's what drivers don't realize. When some driver gets an attitude and just parks at a truck stop and takes a Greyhound bus home, you just abandon company property. <laughs> and it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Big deal. So I drove to Loudoun, Tennessee, dropped it off. And they were getting upset with me because I was insisting that a maintenance need to come out and inspect my tractor before I leave this property. Yeah, you want they to said, make- why do you, they, he said, what's wrong with it? I said, nothing's wrong with it. That's why I want you to inspect you it. Just he goes, well, make sure wrong you don't with get, you, you don't get side swipe. You don't get, you don't get ambushed. Exactly. exactly. So with these, so, you know, one of these mattresses, they can, they can charge you $500 just to replace the mattress. Yeah, they, they, they can, they can, and they will. They were upset. He finally came out, and I had my little cell phone in my pocket with my voice recorder on, but I didn't let him know. You know, I just let the voice recorder play out mm-hmm. because I needed a, a record that he wouldn't look inside the truck. He walked around the truck. He acted kind of arrogant. He goes, "You're good to go. Your taxi ought to be here anytime." And I'm like, "Damn, you know, damn." So let me damn. let me ask you this right quick before we uh before we get up out of here. Uh, so you you just feel that that. Y- for for companies, you just want companies to, to treat the drivers fairly out here. You you just feel that there's a lot of a lot of companies out here that's taking advantage of the of the drivers without giving a fair compensation, right? Well, it's true that we know this. We know this. We know that those there's there's ten thousand trucking companies or whatever. We know this. But if a company, I'm like you, you know, we were talking about age factor earlier. Mm -hmm. I think this is the difference right here, my friend. Mm -hmm. You and I came from an era, an age where if I shake your hand and look you in the eye and I tell you I'll be there, that's what I mean. Exactly. 
We've lost that. We've lost that. And so what I'm trying to let drivers know is, you know, you have to treat this like a business and walk away with your integrity intact, even when something like that happens. Because it's going to, you know, that company, no other company can do anything about what happened in the past for me. But if I show up at the next company with a chip on my shoulder and whatever, then I'm going to have 10 companies on my record in the next two or three years because I don't trust anybody. But we sort of have no choice. When we walk in and we hear all of their stuff about orientation, Mm -hmm. and I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not doing a shout out about Baylor trucking, but I watched your video. You did an interview with the uh, recruiter for Baylor trucking and Baylor trucking was close to where I live, but it was your interview. She stayed on with me. It was like a 30 minute video or something. Mm -hmm. And she knew that you were recording it and you were going to put it on your show. But I'm telling you, I found a company that is living up to what the recruiter told you on the phone. Now you they they are family owned. They do treat their drivers with integrity. You know, we don't expect them to come up and you know give me a back rub when I get back to the shop or anything. But if they tell me yes, they mean yes. If they tell me no, they're willing to tell me why it's no. It's not just no. You don't need no. Hang up the phone. But companies that treat their drivers with integrity. Is something that we have to be willing to give time to find out after we get on the inside. So you know this this one truck driver, in the face. this this one truck driver, this YouTuber. I, I'm not sure if you 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 familiar with him, but he's uh his name is uh Trucker Scoob E Do, and he drives he yeah, drives for he drives for Vegas. You might pick it up this morning. Sunday morning. Now, Monday I haven't morning, met him, but I this, saw a couple of his this videos. Monday, this is him. I got in. Okay. Hold on, like what? This you is might him. Pick up Monday morning. Now you get that unloaded. Your next load might not deliver to Tuesday, but you is five or six hundred miles away. Then you can run it. You got a fresh eleven hours. Understand that, okay? Understand that. That's what's going on. I want you to understand. That's the way they run over here. Your average miles over at Baylor can range anywhere. From 19, I'm going to say from 19 on a slow week to 3,000. Are you going to see 3,000 every yeah. week? No, you're not going to see it every no. week. The reason being is you, now you might week. see it if you one of those drivers that stay out because what's going to happen so, is you're going to pick up a load Friday. So, you, so, so Scooby-Doo yeah. is talking about Baylor. So pretty much what he, what he spoke yeah. on Baylor is pretty much uh, – you you feel that's a correct assessment of of the company that you rocking out with now? Yeah, but you know there's a qualifier there. Mm-hmm. When you join Baylor and other companies do the same thing, they give you an option when you come in. It takes a little bit for your 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 driver manager to get to know you, and you get to know them, and you work through the little bumps in the road of differences. But what he's talking about, you know, 3,000 miles a week, Mm -hmm. that's a driver that is available every day for a two-week run. You're two weeks out, you come home two or three days. You're out two weeks, you come home two or three days. The other program, and you get more cents per mile if you're out two weeks. If you're out every, if you want to be home every weekend, they will let you come home every weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. That you're at something like 37 cents a mile. But the trouble is, if you want to be home every weekend, they can't send you like to the West Coast and to all these long range driving trips. They have to keep you kind of close to home. You're more like regional. But they will let you run your clock. If you have hours available, they will find a way to keep you moving. That's what I have found out. Oh, okay. They've got something like 200 trucks in the fleet, but they've got 800 trailers so that they've got loaded trailers sitting around ready for dropping hooks. Mm-hmm. They specialize in dropping hooks. But for me, I'm a two-week driver. I go out for two weeks at a time. If I want to run that hard and I can keep the pace, they will keep feeding it to me. Okay. But personally... I like a little bit slower pace. I don't like that running in the pack 
70 miles an hour day in day out that wears me out man i'm sorry (laughs) they give me that option they're flexible enough with me they don't boss me and tell me hey you got to go you know you got 20 hours on your clock i need you out there they're not that way so that's what i appreciate about them i mean there's some occasions they've called me they tried to get me to go into new york city recently as an example i know you're trying to close the show (laughs) but they approached it as a matter of integrity instead of bossing me the last company i was with i went into new york city almost exclusively and the last time i drove out of there bro i said wayne i ain't coming back to new york in a semi (laughs) It ain't worth the risk. There's I, too much going I, on. If I, I don't, I don't even get a I, I don't think too many people is coming back in the semi. <laughs> I'm one of them. Yeah. I am one of them, definitely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will do it if it's organized and if it's not 7 a.m. They wanted me to come in at 7 a.m., get a live load in Best Memphis, Memphis, New York, and be back out of there and run up somewhere else. And I said, hey. I said, I told you when I started the company, my manager asked me, is there any place you will not go? And I said, New York City. I said, I'll go to a New York address, but I don't want to go downtown. I'll go through New York. I don't want to go downtown. But anyway, she called me up and she says, I know you don't want to go to New York City. She said, but we got this situation. And you had to. And, 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 you had to and you had to go. And then they'll she come said, back. We're in a pinch. They'll come back and, and said, say, "Yo, if you do this said, for well, us, yeah. if you do this for yeah. us, we'll we'll." She said, "I'll mark it on your mm-hmm. file." If she said, "If you'll do this favor for us this time," she goes, "I'll mark it on your file that you don't have to go on." I said, "You know," I said, "You're really asking me to compromise." something I've decided I don't want to do in the industry. I said, I'm asking you to just let me say no. She goes, ah, is there any way? And I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you no and be a jerk, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you that if you tell me to go in, you're telling me to compromise something I don't believe. She said, all right, we're going to go with that. She goes, we're just going to drop a load and take the hit. She goes, uh, you know, I'll call you back and, and we'll send you somewhere else. And she did. They, she called me back. And they never brought it up again. They didn't say, well, you know, <laughs> the other day you cost us, you know, pretty heavy. So they never said a word about it. We agreed on it. But like I said, I didn't approach it like a jerk. She didn't act like a jerk. And that's what I appreciate. I think we can work through just about anything as long as we're just kind of communicating as partners. But when they come across that company I'm complaining about, they tell you where you're going and when to be there it's not for discussion all right and if you can't do it or won't do it park the truck park the truck <laughs> all right all right so Scoop, scooby dog scooby doo i was listening to his stuff he's got some he's got some other angles and points of view but he always comes back and says you know the company operates with integrity and that's the bottom line that's what i like about it all right all right that's what i like about it all right, brother man, Wayne Shipman. This is Wayne Shipman on the show. Yo, man, I appreciate you coming on and telling the story. Uh, rocking out with me this evening, man. That's uh Woo! A lot lot this this a lot of a lot of stuff that uh that these guys gotta got that they gotta take in. They gotta take they 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 don't understand that they gotta when they come out in this industry, it's it's a lot to take in. So, I, I appreciate you coming on and uh, explaining that for the uh, for the new jacks out here, especially for the older gentlemen that's uh, that's uh, coming out here as well, man. You know, like I said, you're in your 50, I'm in my 50s, and um, and for guys that's coming out here that's uh, that's older, you know, they're gonna need to they're gonna they're gonna need to learn all this stuff, man. Uh, any advice uh, for the older folks that's that's getting into this uh, industry, man? What what advice you got for the older folks? Hey, you know, we were talking about cell phones changing and updating technology so rapidly. Mm-hmm. A lot of these older guys, man, they're just trying to make ends meet. 
They're just trying to do what I did, jump out of where they were and jump into something to make some money. If it's not working for you and you keep forcing the issue, bad things can happen out there. That's the truth of the industry. If you can figure it out and you can figure out a smooth lane and you got it going and you're making money, do it. But if things are not working for you, this industry will cost you dearly. All right, all right. Good advice. Lawsuits are a dime a dozen. Good advice from, from, from an older gentleman out here in this game, man. And that's what's up. If you guys want to come on and holler at your boy, you know, you just want to come on and chop it up. You know, have a good evening conversation like we sitting at the uh, Petro at the Iron Skillet, you know, eating, chilling, talking. Yo, hit me up in the uh, Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to Instagram and hit me up over there. You can look me up at LockoutMen. Make sure y'all, you know, subscribe over there. Also... If you like content like this and more, all you got to do is like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. That's what we do over here. We just have a good old time. You know what I'm saying? I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. My cousin, DJ Ryan Wolf. Who, who is that DJ? He like will that? play us out. And I will come back at you guys with another video podcast. Y'all take it easy. Peace.